literally was paralyzed from the waist down. I was told I would never walk again in July of 2000. I had won an arena championship in August of 2001. The dream is absolutely free. The hustle is so separate. The hunger to be more, to do more, to give more. You gotta go put in the work. Success takes time. What do I want to do every day for the rest of my life? Do that. Brought to you by Mati Energy, it's The Healthy Hustle. A show where we interview today's movers and shakers, influencers and entrepreneurs. Get an inside look into their stories and how they hustle to get to where they are today. Hustle is waking up one day, the day before you die, and realizing you gave it your all, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy, and in execution. Welcome to another episode of The Healthy Hustle. On today's show, we're talking to JoJo Polk, one of Raleigh, North Carolina's most inspirational fitness instructors who recovered from being paralyzed from the waist down to win multiple arena football national championships. Get an inside look into JoJo's hustle and his story from injury to influence. Jojo, thank you so much for coming in today, man. We uh, we made this happen pretty fast. Yeah, okay. it happened real quick. But, hey, thanks for having me, man. Uh, I appreciate you being quick moving. You've been moving fast your whole life, though, man. It seems like from day one, you haven't stopped. I mean, you had a little hiccup in, along the way. But um, run us through kind of the, the college Jojo. What, what's running through his head? I know you were active in sports, but what was really the roadmap that you were setting? What was kind of driving you through all these different athletic you know, ventures for you. Uh, being poor, no. <laughs> you know, college man, you don't have much money. So, kind of just, I mean, like you said, sports kind of was my drive. Like, I mean, it's what I love to do. It's what what kept me going. But my drive was, I wanted to make it to the NFL. I mean, it was that was my goal from the time I was nine years old. So, when I was in college, I, I mean, I did the the stuff that other people don't do, like run the practice and. You know, I'd, I'd work out, do practice, come back, run back to the gym, work out again, and, you know, then go to study hall, do all that stuff. My teammates used to look at me like I was crazy. But to me, it was like, if I'm going to make it, I got to separate myself somehow. And I wasn't the biggest or the strongest or the fastest. So if no one can outwork me, maybe that's my separation, you know? Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think having such a clear vision of where you want to go is like a unique thing. What helped you discover that vision when you were so young? Man, I just, I mean, once I touched the football, man, and once I got out there, it just, you know, you lo- either you love it or you don't. <laughs> and then and then once you take that first hit, you really love it, know if you love it or not. So once I once I did that, man, I, I, I had a great uh, elementary school coach too, which it's kind of unheard of sometimes. Sometimes they're just kind of oh, like yeah, that glorified really early babysitters. Early on in the <laughs> yeah, but man, my coach was great. Man, he he interacted with us very well, and uh, he made me not only just love football, he made me love sports. You know, so that's kind of why I got into basketball and track, and um, all those kind of like helped me along with football. But football was always my first love. That's that's incredible. And so, where did you go to school when you started playing then? Uh, when I started playing uh, in college, yeah, uh, uh, Northeastern State. Northeastern State, yeah, a little Division Two, yeah, represent uh, definitely. And then coming out of Northeastern State, um, you had this career, you had this career in college, and then what was that like graduating and then going into the Arena League, right? Yeah, well, um, so the, I, just to kind of give you a background about Division Two, right? So in Division One. You get college pro days. Like they all, they come out to see everybody on pro day. Well, in Division Two, you don't get that pro day. It's not that big. Oh, so they come and check out certain players. So I was one of those players that they wanted to take a look at. So you were fighting to be kind of put on the map in yeah. this D2 league. So yeah. Is that just the tapes that they're watching or how yeah, the tapes that they're watching? That? I mean, I was an All American in D2, so that kind of helped me kind of stand out a little bit. So, um, yeah, they would just say, hey, I want to come see JoJo, Marcus, and Keith, you know, and we'd have to go work out for them individually. Um, and but so, I can imagine you had to almost prove yourself past what some of the D1 athletes were doing because you're kind of in this dark corner almost of college sport or college football at that time. Right. And and honestly, back then, it was not so um, open as it is now as far as like you see the combines now are inviting D3 players. Well, and D2 exactly. Players. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't so familiar back then. So, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, I ran a four three forty and opened some eyes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, OK. Yeah. And so, uh, 
you know, next time I looked up, the Kansas City Chiefs was like knocking on my door. But they said, hey, we want you to go against some more competition. We want to see you at a higher level. And that's how You're I still even making discovered. you prove yourself. Yeah, even when you yeah, came that's out how of I the... even discovered Arena. I didn't even know what Arena was. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. So Arena was almost just an obstacle that was presented in front of you to say, hey, you seem impressive, but you got to go through another thing to come. <laughs> yeah, let's see what yeah. you really got. Yeah, I, I mean, they said indoor football, and I kind of laughed like, are you kidding? <laughs> and, and they were like, no, for real. So, um, yeah, man, Arena was not even on my radar at all. No kidding. Yeah. So then you're, you're basically told you have to do it, and then you have to figure out how to get into it. Yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> so that might be the funny story right there. Yeah, so um, yeah. um, I got done with college. You know, I'm going to all these different combines and stuff, working out for these teams. And um, so they tell me I got to go do this arena thing. I don't, I don't know how to get on a team. I don't know where a team is, but there happened to be a team where I went to college at, like in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was like an hour away from my yeah. college. So some of my teammates had already joined that team. Okay. okay. Right? So... But his season was already going. Like, so it's not like you can just play. You know, you got to get a hold of the coach and get a hold of the GM, like all this stuff. Well, my teammate was like, yo, I'm going to hold open the back door for you. You just come in and, and, hey, just represent, dog. Just show them what you got. And so, you know, (laughs) come in, put on a jersey. Just throw on a a helmet. So that's what I did, man. (laughs) He held the back door open. I didn't even, I just kind of blended in with the team, threw on some pads, threw on a helmet, ran out there. And coach was like, wait a minute. (laughs) <laughs> Who the hell is this? Like, what, what, wearing like a practice jersey? Like, man, I just, I, I just threw on whatever I could find, man. I had like a awesome. t-shirt on. Yeah. That's how that stood out because I had this like, t-shirt on. <laughs> and like he uh, he came up to me and was like, man, hey, you know, we're not taking any more players. And I, yeah. and I, I don't know why, why. I mean, I'm not usually so straightforward, but I just looked him in the eye and was like, I mean, I, I didn't come to try out. I'm, I came to play. Oh, man. And he was like. What? I was like, I came to play, coach. I was like, I didn't come to try out. I said, you gonna want me on your team. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And 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 my teammate was like, Yeah, coach, that's the dude we was telling you about. Man, he's good, like da da da. And he still was looking at me like, I don't give a damn. You don't walk into my practice <laughs> and think you're gonna play. I said, Well, I said, I said, Well, I'm here now, you might as well just give me a yeah. shot. And he was like, Whatever. So he threw me in practice. <laughs> Well, here's the funny thing. So, like I said, I didn't know anything about Arena. So, the dude backs up like 10 yards. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's he doing? Because the formations are yeah, different. Yeah, he can, they can run at the line. They can run at you full speed. So, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's he doing? And he's looking at me like, you never seen Arena before? You think you're going to make this team? I'm like... Yeah, I'm good. I know it. I got it. I got it. So playing it off. He yeah. comes running full speed at me, and I literally jam this dude <laughs> at the line. And the receiver's mad at me, like, "Oh, you practice player? Like, like you trying to hurt me?" I'm like, "Yo, I just, I mean, you Dude, didn't catch the ball, yeah. like, <laughs> so apparently I did something right." Because you, so you were playing defensive. Yeah, back, playing defensive. And this back. guy winds up on the offensive side. Yeah, coming full speed. Full speed, and, and I just caught him at the line. Boom. <laughs> And so coach was like, okay, I don't think I've ever seen that before. I'm like, see, I got this. And so he was like, well, that's not how we play. And so now he's like conceded I got some skills, some athletic ability. So he starts kind of telling me, this is what I want you to do. And I'm one of those guys, if you tell me, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And so next thing I know, I had three picks in practice. And he was like, well, we're down a DB anyway. So we'll bring you on this road trip, but you're not going to play. You know, oh, man, another another little hurdle there. Right. Like they're not making it easy on you. Here. <laughs> I mean, you know what? I think it's anything in life. I know, you know, just like with you guys and Monty, you know, there's always going to be obstacles that you go through. There's always going to be hoops you got to jump through. But you know what? It, when you're passionate about something, you care about something, yeah. you're going to jump through those hoops. Because I mean, you just it doesn't matter. You've already proven yourself so many times before. What's it? Oh, another time. Do it one time. Now, yeah, yeah, do it one time. This, this so is familiar to me. We go, we, we go on this trip. We all, we're in Florida, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're in the game, and we're losing by two touchdowns. I'm, I've am i never sat on the sideline. So and you're, I'm si- like, you're sitting on the sideline. Yeah, I'm just, just sitting there like, falling asleep like, ugh, because I've never <laughs> watched a game before. I'm usually playing. So okay. finally I'm like, Coach, man, I mean – it's halftime. We lose them by 14. What's, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Yeah, there, and he know? was like, whatever. He's like, just get in the game. Go ahead and play. Not kidding. First play of the game, 
almost picked it off. Tripped. The only reason oh, I no. didn't intercept it is because my own teammate tripped me and we both fell. Jeez. And the receiver almost caught it for a touchdown because we both fell over each other. And I was like, oh, God. And the coach was looking at me like, why? What the hell? Like, <laughs> so next play. Picked it off 40, oh, yards, 40 yards for yeah. a touchdown. Uh, nice. Okay. Yeah. That second, must play my, I mean, second play of my arena career. That's got to feel so good. It was good, man. My mom was there and everything. It was hilarious. And he was just looking at me like, what the? Because yeah. arena is not supposed to come that easy to people. It's just, uh, it's totally different. It's, it's a lot faster. Arena, the field is like 50 yards. Yeah, it's 50 yards and long. It's, it's only like 27 yards wide. 27 yards. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's like, it's like, Imagine putting hockey, basketball, and football together. That's what it's like. It's straight, fast break all day. The walls are there, so you're hitting it like hockey. And they got nets in the back, but the nets are live. Everything is live. The wall is even live as long really? as... Really? Yeah, you can bounce off the wall as long as no one touches you. Everything's no live. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And it's, it moves fast, it right? It moves fast. Like, I mean, games like... I I I remember winning a game eighty seven to seventy. Holy moly! Yeah, it's cause, basketball numbers. Yeah, man, because it's like score, score, score. So th- so you had this moment, and it was kind of like the coach, like, all right, JoJo's legit, and then you're you're now starting. Finally, like, okay, now the arena, did arena seem like it was going to be the career path now? Uh, no, man. Still that was still Kansas, never, yeah, the Kansas I was, I was like, Chiefs. this is a stepping stone. Yeah. So, literally, yeah. those games I was playing, I was just trying to show out. Like, what can I do to, like, I mean, what a make motivation to make you, you play harder. Almost, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, plus my teammates were there with me, so it was kind of fun. Like, I was back in college, you know. Yeah. Um, so, we were having a fun time, and we, you know, I mean, we were killing teams, like, and uh, I, I ended up that game. I ended up with two interceptions in that game alone. And then over the next five games, I had like seven interceptions. I had like 28, 30 t- tackles. You know, I caused like three fumbles. So, I mean, all of a sudden, I was looking. Why were you good. so much better than everyone? Man, I don't, I don't, I don't. I hate saying I was so much better, but I just felt like. I work so much aptitude. harder. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just like it's one thing to go out there and just be an athlete, mm-hmm. but it's one it's another thing to turn that athlete up. You know what I'm saying? And and it, it, it not to compare myself in any way, shape, or form, but it's like the LeBron Jameses and stuff like that of the mm-hmm. world. It's not just that they're great; it's that that they will themselves to be great, and they just mm-hmm. don't stop at being great. Every day they try and be great, and that was me. Like. I mean, I know, I'm pretty sure once we got done with practice, all of them were going home, dropping back a couple beers and just standing up. When I was done with practice, man, I was working out. I was going, uh, sprinting up hills, doing ladders. Like, I'd go home, sleep, get up early in the morning before practice, go run some more, go to practice. Like, I mean, I guess a lot of the people in that phase, though, don't necessarily, are they all going for the NFL or are some of them kind of, you know, I mean, I'm in arena, I'm going to stay here? I think, I don't think there's anybody out there that plays football that says, hey, I just want to play high school football. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and the, the ultimate yeah. goal is probably to try and play at a higher level. Um, but it's, it's one thing to say you want to play somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's just another thing to believe in it. And if you don't have that belief, then you really aren't yeah. going much farther than where you are. Yeah, yeah. And that really drove your work ethic. Yeah, too. Man. So the, the first season ended pretty well, or was this when? I, yeah. So here's the kicker, man. I didn't even get to finish the season. The Chiefs came and was like, yeah, you're good. <laughs> so you've proven yourself. Yeah, man. You know, they stayed, faxed me over my contract. I signed it right away. Sent it, that's back when we were faxing stuff. Can you no, believe man. that? I just told my age. We so. might need to, to, to tell them what a fax is. I'm just kidding. I didn't fax anything. No, no, it was cool, man. I signed an NFL contract, man. It was it was long and big and a lot of paperwork, but. uh yeah, I signed it, man. I, the, I the thing you've been working mom. for. Yeah, the thing yeah. I've been working yeah. my whole since I was a kid, like playing in my front yard by myself. Like I used to tackle myself in the front yard. My mom used to say, "You look crazy out there," but it was all a means to an end. You know, <laughs> we'll talk through how to do that at the end of the show. <laughs> right? <laughs> how do you tackle yourself, yeah. man? It, yeah, it's a definitely a feat, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I uh, called my mom as soon as I. New man, we celebrated, and I was super excited. Um, but uh, we had a game that Saturday, um, and if that if my team won, they were going to make the playoffs. 
and they were like they, they were a first time team like we were like a first time franchise so for them to make the the playoffs would have been historic for them to be a first team in the league make the playoffs and I've always been a team player man so I was supposed to fly out that Monday camp started on Tuesday and we played on Saturday so I was like oh so I mean we all win yeah I, I play this game they go to the playoffs I go to the league we all win and that is the game I broke my neck. That's the game. The the spirit walking into that, though, it was just going to be another walk in the park. Yeah, you man. had this like highlight reel season, ready to go for the to the Kansas City Chiefs, and then this accident. So, I guess the the game itself was going really well, though, right? Yeah, like, man. It was just another. I, I would have had like five picks in that game. Like their quarterback was terrible. Yeah. I'd watched so much film, you know, and like the uh, the the play I got hurt on, I literally. I'd seen it like five times in yeah. in film. And so I literally was playing the play and I just was one step too short. And that's it. I mean, because I, I watched the video and it's it, you know, if you just watch and you didn't really know what was going on, it would just be kind of like, oh, well, he hit the wall, another arena kind of play. But it was just like you said, that one step yeah. that went, I guess it was head into the wall. And then snapped one of the vertebrae, yeah. and then in that moment, it, w- it was you were paralyzed from the waist down. Is that right? Yeah, paralyzed from paralyzed from the waist down, man. Uh, and I don't wish that on anyone. No, yeah. <laughs> I mean, going from where you were performing at such a high level to then being almost like I guess you weren't really bedridden, but ridden to a wheelchair. No, yeah, I was bedridden. Really? Yeah. It here's the thing, and like it's almost like you just said, going from supposedly this elite athlete to all of a sudden not being able to move or do anything like it is the most surreal thing that I've ever been through in my life. And, uh, and it, and it puts you in this state that you didn't know your mind could even go, you know, this, this, this downward spiral. You've never been there before. No, man. I'm always positive, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I stub my toe. That's one of the things I love about you, right? (laughs) Like it's just, everything's positive and move forward, get over it. But I, I imagine something like this just, yeah, it's, that comes it's with a whole something new way. like this, man. It's not. It's not one of those. Hey, I'm going to get over it tomorrow type things. And uh, you don't realize that until it happens. And next thing you know, I mean, you just feel empty, like like you lost everything, like the world kind of just stopped. Mm-hmm. Or maybe let me rephrase that: you stopped in the world, and the oh, world is yeah. still moving. Mm-hmm. That's the worst feeling ever, man. It's like everyone's moving around you, and you can't do anything. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, terrible. I can't imagine. I mean, so you, I guess you came back. Did, was it, were you on the field or was this after the so, accident later in the week or? So no, yeah, it was, this was during the game when I, uh, when I broke my neck and, um, did you know, were you still like in the moment or <laughs> I, I can tell you it's funny now, now, now I think back on it, but so seriously, when you knock yourself out, Hopefully you've never been knocked. I've Jacob. Ne- I, don't think yeah, I've, I've, I haven't knocked myself out. I think I've been dazed and confused, <laughs> but not like out cold. Yeah, you know, you didn't, you didn't like cheat on nobody's girlfriend or anything. <laughs> so that's good. No one knocks you smooth out. No, but once you get knocked out, and I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but for me, uh, my senses came back one at a time, and so being in this big arena, I was laid out on the ground, and my sight came back first, right? And so I'm seeing this huge light and all I'm thinking is, oh, my God, I'm dead. (laughs) Like, Lord, no, I'm too young to die. Right. Because they say you're going to see this light. Right. And those arena lights are super bright. The stories are true. Super bright. (laughs) Well, thank God my vision started to come more into focus and people were standing over me. And I'm like, I mean, thank God. You know, I mean. I wasn't ready for that. That's a all. sigh of relief. Yeah, that, <laughs> I was not ready for that. So, um, but I still can't hear them. Like they're all standing over me, and I can see them saying stuff, yes. but I can't hear them. And all of a sudden, it was like a pop, pop. Like my hearing came back, and people were like, "Jojo, Jojo, can you hear me?" Blah. Blink your eyes. Do this. Do that. And I'm looking at him like, "All right, man, I hear you." And, and he's like, "All right." Uh, do me a favor, uh, you know, uh, uh, move your fingers. And apparently I moved my finger. It's a paramedic over you. like on the yeah, yeah. It's our trainer. Oh, like, it's our yeah. trainer. Yeah, it's our head trainer. He's like, move your fingers. So apparently I moved my finger. He's like, move your arm. Apparently I moved my arm a little bit. 
And he was like, you know, move your foot. And dude, I would never play poker with this dude because his face was just like, <laughs> right? Like, like he saw a ghost or something. I was like, yo, what's wrong? Something wrong? And he's like, no, nothing's wrong. No. Like, I'm like, dude, you can't, your face looks like uh, someone shot me and there's a bullet hole like 12 inches wide. I mean, you know, um, and so I knew something was wrong. I just didn't know what. And and the funny thing about being paralyzed, too, is that you don't know you're paralyzed. Your body still feels like you're moving. Like, everything feels fine. Like, you don't feel like, oh, I lost feeling in something. Like, you don't feel that way. Like, everything, your blood is still flowing. You know what I'm saying? So everything's still flowing through your body. Um, so I didn't know I was paralyzed yet. And then they put me on, like, the little gurney and took me out and took me to the hospital. It wasn't until... Mm, four to five hours in the hospital Really? When the doctor finally came in there And was like So son um, We just gotta tell you something You're paralyzed And I'm like No I'm not I was just playing football Like <laughs> there's no There's no way I'm paralyzed Did you see what was just happening? Did you see? I was about to intercept that ball Did you see it? I just was one step too short I, yeah. you know, I still knocked the ball down You know it's like It's like How did that happen? You know, such a foreign concept yeah. at that time. Yeah, man. Like everything was everything was about trying to be perfect, like trying to be mm-hmm. as good as I could be. And it's the irony that I feel like I was I faulted myself because I knew what I was doing. I was baiting the quarterback to throw that ball anyway. I wanted him to throw it. I was gonna pick it off, run it to the end zone, score mm-hmm. a touchdown, right? And in my mind, I said break, but I didn't break on that. You know, usually I listen to myself yeah. and I broke. I was like, oh, shoot, I should break now. And that's why I just got one hand on it. I knocked the ball down. But when I knocked the ball down, yeah. I tripped over the receiver's foot. Yeah. And that's when my head went straight down into the wall. So it, that kind of killed me for a little while, too, is the fact that I felt like I could have avoided it. Because you knew exactly. Fault. Yeah. I mean, but to a T. It sounds like you knew the moment that you made the decision yeah. that probably changed, changed my whole life. Yeah, changed one life. step. One step wow. changed my whole life. One, step one decision, away. like break at, at a two second mark instead of a three second mark. I could have not, I could have avoided that whole yeah. thing. You know? Wow, that's, that's incredible. And so that probably hits you like a wave when you finally. I guess agree with the doctor now you know like all right I guess I am but then you had to go through this recovery period and you know you being one of probably the more inspirational motivational guys that that I know um personally at least like the the spirit that you had to maintain through that like what what's the thought process when you go from training every day two or three times a day to now it's just focused on my body getting better right it it is almost not a thought like it's not like a thought process it's almost like you literally take one second at a time Mm. because it's foreign to you you're used to like like I said being an athlete you're used to like moving it at the speed of light you know and now you can you can't even take a step like I forgot how to walk like in my mind it was just left right left right right but my legs couldn't do it and so when you're going through that rehab, man, it is all mental. Like it's all, and I, I, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people, even in just simple injuries and things like that, it is mental. It's like you have to let yourself know that you can do something before you actually do it, or your body even wants to do it. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I used the to mental sit, buy-in yeah, to the task before I even got my legs back. I used to sit, I don't know, have you ever seen Kill Bill? Oh, man, it's been a while. I know, yeah. I mean, it's so on my age again, right? <laughs> so, but Kill Bill 2, Faxes she, Bill. like, paralyzed herself. She was in the car, like, mm-hmm. looking at her, like, willing her legs to move. That was me every day in the hospital. Like, literally sitting there looking at my legs, like, come on. Come on. Like, that was, that was my day. Like, yeah. I'm going to walk. Like, these are going to move. That was my day. So when you when you realized it, did your mind switch to I'm going to walk again one day? This is not an option. That that was always my thought process. The doctors were like, "Well, you're going to be paralyzed because there's a such thing as a complete paralyzation mm-hmm. and an incomplete." Okay. 
Incomplete means you have some feeling. Right. Was that you? you, was that you or new? I was complete. I had none. I couldn't feel anything below the waist. Like so there was no like shimmer of hope in the distance. They new, were just like, "Sorry, you're." I was wetting myself on the daily. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> I had no, no clue. Yeah. You know? Um. And. But still, in my head, I was like, "No, like, because they haven't been through it. it." That's the one thing I will say. And I love doctors, and thank you, doctors, for everything you've done for me, everything you've done for my wife, everything. Um, but uh, but they haven't gone through it. They know the the medicine and the education of it. Yeah. But if they've never gone through it, how can they tell me that I can't come out of it? You get that? I mean, that that's the perspective of someone ready to, to make it happen for themselves. <laughs> right. I mean, that just shows your, your your colors. like. Yeah, man. So that, that was my focus. Like, I mean, they know, but they don't know. So I'm going to try and prove them wrong. And I just happened to do so. Yeah. So it was, was it two months that it took or how two long Two months was it? in the hospital. But uh, the crazy thing that a lot of people don't know mm-hmm. is that it doesn't just go away. Like, so... Even when my legs came back somewhat mm. and I was doing rehab and all this stuff, there would be some days I'd be at home and they would just go out. Wow. And I'm just laying in the bed like, oh, sh- can I cuss on this thing? Because I was going to say that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you're just like, oh, crap. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I can't move, like for real. And the doctor literally told me, he's like, you're not out of the woods, Joe. Like, paralyzation doesn't have a timeline. Like, He's like, you still could be paralyzed for the rest of your life. Like, we can't call that right now because I'm still healing. Like, my neck hadn't fully healed. Like, I was still in the healing process, even though I'm going through rehab. So I'm like, oh, snap. Like, so how come you didn't tell me this before? You know, that's something I might need to know. Was it almost like when your neck had healed, your legs were coming back? Or was it? It was almost like as my neck was healing. My legs were coming back. Okay. It was a weird. I, I mean, I was still in a neck brace and all that stuff. Like I still couldn't. I, they had to stabilize me. They didn't want yeah. me moving or anything because everything was still kind of out of place. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, man. I, I, it's just one of those things that I didn't even know about. Mm-hmm. Like, it, and I don't think I can even explain it to people because, like I said, it's something I don't ever wish on anybody. Yeah. Like. I can't take you into my mindset. I can honestly be honest with you and say there was times that I was like, I just don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. Like, and I mean on this earth, yeah. like just dealing with this yeah, issue. I just, like- I, if, if this is how my life is going to be, if this is how I'm going to live, just take me. Like, I, I, I wish I would have, you know, yeah. been gone on that field. Maybe I wish I would have been like I had those thoughts. Never in my life did I ever or think I'd ever that, think yeah. like that ever. But it's something that you can't help. It takes you into that realm. And when you're like constantly focused on progression and you are progressing to be put on a completely different path, that's got to be super tough because you were, you were so focused on improvement and it's happening and things are, things are rolling in the right direction. Right. But then once that's taken away, I can only, I mean, I, I well, can't really imagine, but not to mention there goes my dream, right? Yeah. Like, I literally signed that contract and now I'll never get to use it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I think that's what was really bringing me down at first. Yeah. Um, but, and I say this like I was down for like ever, but it, I had my on and off moments, but even in the hospital when I was still paralyzed, I mean, I had the nurses and I would have like eight nurses in my room laughing and, <laughs> and I'm like, ain't y'all got something to do? There's people dying in this hospital. Get out of my room, you know? Um, but it was just because they just loved that I just, I wasn't going to take no for an answer. And that spirit attracts people. Yeah, it, it does. Because there's not weird. a lot of people that can, I mean, there's not a lot of people that, that would happen to that are still willing to put a smile on their face. Well, and, and, and I'm talking about it now like I realize what happened, but I'm, I should, this is just me looking back. Back then, I was just being me. I didn't even realize that's how I was being. I didn't realize I was being this positive person or whatever. That's just who I was. Like, we, we grew up without nothing. So every little bit that we got or if I got to go get an ice cream cone or something, it meant it was like getting a gold chain on your neck or something. You know what I'm saying? It's just so... I feel like at a young age, I learned that the little things matter, you know? And it also probably, I mean, 
from my perspective, you constantly put your in a place, put yourself in a place to deal with hardship, yeah. whether you were training or whatever. And like, even though your spirit might have been down, you were still fighting the whole time. You're like another another obstacle on the path of JoJo that I'm going through. Yeah. But I can imagine the day when the the tingling started coming back. That was a big oh, day. Oh God, it was. Well, so here's the kicker too: when you're paralyzed, you have spasms, mm. and if you're looking at it. Your eyes are going to tell your brain that you're moving. Get it? Okay. Even though yeah. I didn't really feel it, I seen it, so I had to feel it, right? It's so weird how that happens. And so <laughs> the doctor was like, I'm not coming in here anymore, Jojo. It's just a spasm. Like, stop calling me in this because I'd be like, oh, my God. I'm moving. <laughs> it's happening. It's yeah. Coming, yeah. And so, I mean, that was kind of heartbreaking for a little bit because I was thinking, dang, I'm really not feeling this and so the day that i actually felt it felt it i was watching tv for the first time instead of you back on my legs no i was in the hospital yeah, yeah how long were you in the that. hospital for i was in the hospital for that two and a half months yeah i didn't leave the hospital they can't i mean most of them don't discharge you unless they have a plan for you and they just didn't have a plan for me what was the way, what were they going to do with me i mean i literally was in a different state than where i lived at like i got hurt on the road so it's yeah. like they had to kind of think of some st- strategic plan of what they were going to do with me once I left the hospital. Wow. So, I didn't know that. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, it was nuts. Out of your own environment, dealing with this issue. And, but you know what? I will say this, though, Jacob, man. Um, it was another time in my life where I saw that there's so much good in people. Mm-hmm. Um, the other team that we played against, their fans, the cheerleaders, like their coaches, like all were, they sent me letters and notes and flowers and all this stuff and like you know we right. wish you luck man da, 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 da. and um apparently it was on tv it was all you know it was, it was big yeah. news you know um i never watched it um until they showed it here when they did the special on me as yeah, a trainer yeah. uh-huh. on wral i had never seen the footage until that day really? so that was like 14 years later i exactly. finally saw the footage that must have been a weird moment. It was I mean, weird, man. Yeah. And honestly, I'm glad I didn't see it back then because yeah. it, it did take me. I, I explain what happened because in my mind, I can so picture. I mean, I can feel it in my bones. like, But I really didn't know. I was knocked out. So I didn't know if that's exactly. And watching that film and watching what I said literally happened. Like it literally was exactly how I explained yeah. it. And I was like, holy crap. So I've been I really been remembering that. Mm-hmm. My oh, whole yeah. life, like confirm like, yeah, your yeah. Like, so it wasn't kind of just that. like, oh, I, I think that's what happened, but no, that's what happened, like literally. Yeah. So. Well, and so the path to recovery is another great story too, because not only did you come back, but you kind of came back with a vengeance. You know, <laughs> you're like, I, I, I'm here again, people. You, you might have taken me down for a few months, but let's go. Yeah. Um. So how long you kind of started getting the feeling back, but then you got back on the field for. Nine, ten years? Yeah, I mean, man. That, it's, it's insane. Yeah, I can't even, honestly, it's a storybook, man. It's, I, I can't explain it to you, the feeling that I had and 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 going through that rehab. Now I see why people record rehab. I'm, I'm telling you right now, mm-hmm. if people could have seen me go through rehab, they'd have an even more respect for me. Because, yeah. like, there were days that, uh, I remember there were days that I would have to wear this contraption on my head. And it looked kind of like a dog muzzle. Okay. And it, it, they put it on your head, and there's a chain hanging from it. And they put a weight at the bottom of it. And you have to do, like, oh, you yeah. know, upward movement, yeah, side movement, you know. The most painful. <laughs> oh, my. Really? Tears would be streaming down. I mean, talking about streaming down my face. The doctor would be like, you know, let's just stop for today. And I'd be smacking his hand like, no, I'm going to finish. I got 30. I'm doing them. And I, you know. And, it's not but, funny, but like your spirit. It's is, crazy, yeah. right? But it's but I tell you what, that was the athlete in me though. And and I I I this is why I advocate for any parent to let their kid at least try a sport if they want, you know, because you learn perseverance. You learn what pain is and what injury is. Because those are two different things. You know what I'm saying? So I knew since I'm coming back from this injury that was very serious, all I was feeling at that point was pain. 
So if I can fight through this pain, something is on the other side of that. I don't know what it is, but if I don't fight through it, I'll never know what it is. Uh, you get yeah. what I'm saying? You, you knew something better was there. Yeah, you man, but that's all yeah. those sprints and practice and all those weightlifting days and all those two-a-days and all those times where you thought you couldn't run another mm-hmm. step or whatever. It prepared, you, it prepared me for that moment. And it's like, no, I'm not quitting until I see where this pain leads me. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man. Yeah. It's crazy how that kind of a sick mindset, but but it works, man. And it, and it works in everyday life, man. Just putting yourself in, in just uncomfortable situations. Mm-hmm. It is what the world is lacking right now. We're afraid of everything. We're afraid of the person that's walking next to us on the street. We're afraid of getting on the elevator alone. We're afraid of getting in our car in the morning. Like we are afraid of so many things. And, and then we turn it towards the government and we turn it towards the gun control but interesting how stuff. like you're saying you can almost desensitize yourself as much to the to the pains of life if you just put yourself through it at the at an early stage right. whether that's athletics or other situations i mean yeah. it challenge your brain as much as your body in some cases well how do you know what pain truly is if you've never fought through it i mean how do you know it's like it's like a word it's just it's just a word to you just like any other word in the dictionary any other vocabulary word that you don't know like it's just another word to you unless you've been through it yeah you think about that you talk know? about it all day but until you've experienced it for yourself do you really have the perspective right it's like it's like when we were get, when we were younger and we would grow up we oh i'm gonna get a job i'm gonna get a job we didn't know what a job was we just like we thought we was gonna go in there make all this money and just live <laughs> happy ever after right that's not how it works you know so once we realized that we got our first job we were like oh we gotta work for this yeah like it's just like it's anything is, in life. This is actually how life happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wendy's does not just give me free stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did Did you go back to play for the same team? I did not. No. Um, here's the crazy kicker too, because so when all this happened, not only did I miss out on an opportunity with the Chiefs, right? I also the XFL. It's on my age again, but the XFL. <laughs> Had just came out, which is you, which is coming back. Yeah, right. It's so it's, it's, it's going to be another league. Yeah, it's not going to be the really XFL. Know. I don't <laughs> think they're going to be stupid and be like, my nickname is he hate me. Like I don't think they're. they're I, don't, I think they're going to actually try and put a quality product okay. of football yeah. on the field. I mean, Steve Spurrier has signed up for this exactly. league. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure yeah. it's going to be somewhat straight line and and like an actual good product on the field. Um, but yeah, the XFL had just came out, and I had just got a contract from them. I couldn't go because I was in a dang neck brace. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I missed out on a lot of opportunities during this. Plus, once I started coming back, like once I realized I could walk again, there's a lot there's a lot of doctors I probably am making mad right now because you know your body. Mm-hmm. Like as much as doctors know your body, you know your body more. You live with yourself every single day. Yeah. So once I, they had me walking, I was like, if I can walk. I can probably jog, right? So when they weren't around, I was trying to jog at home, you know. And I was like, okay, well, if this I can kinda jog, working, like- maybe I can kind of speed it up and get a little run going. Not a sprint. Yeah. I'm just gonna run. And uh, so I would try and like pick Playing up the with pace. The line, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so once I realized I could run, I was like, mm, I'm trying to sprint. And so once I realized I could sprint, I was like, I gotta try and play football again. Like, I just need to know if I can play. And it just so happened that I was in New Orleans when all this happened, and my sister was stationed there. And she, my sister's a Marine, yeah. out to the veterans of the world. Um, yeah, she's a Marine, and so they had a flag football league, and they took that stuff serious. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> real serious. That's like, not normal the Marines, the Army, yeah. and the Navy, they are not all friends. A good <laughs> testing ground, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> not all friends. I found that out real quick, but... um. So I had begged my sister, like, please let me play on the team. Please, 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 please. And she was like, you ain't going to get me killed by mom. No. And, like, I literally was in tears. Like, I just need to know if I can just be athletic. I didn't, I didn't even care if I was the good curiosity anymore. Of your, like, yeah, I just wanted to know, mm-hmm. make, can I even catch a ball? Like, I didn't know. And so finally talked her into it, man. Got out there and make a long story short, we won the championship. Like I was bawling, like <laughs> out of control. Like, like I, I, I had like the most touchdowns on our team, the most interceptions on our team. Like, 
it was it was such a surreal moment to be like, oh my god, I really am still like able to do this. Yeah, I'm a and I'm not just able to do this. Like I'm really better than all these guys. Like that was weird to me. Like I'm I broke my neck, but I'm still at a level where these guys cannot. Were you back slow like me training down. like you were before? No, I mean I honestly you know I was just doing rehab. Like I was. I didn't want to overdo it, overdo it. Like, I would do push-ups and sit-ups at home and stuff like that, but I was not lifting weights by any means. Like, I was scared to death of that. Like, so I would only lift weights when I was at the facility because I just didn't. I still had that fear factor that I used to have this reoccurring dream that I would go to a chiropractor and he would pop my neck and I'd be paralyzed again. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I'd wake up in, like, this cold sweat dripping all, like, like, I'd have that dream like all the time I, And I It finally went away like Like a couple years after the injury But I used to have it like on the weekly That's a nightmare Yeah, yeah it was terrible man But uh, yeah man I, I played in that league We won like um, Oh and I, I have to say this I had to play as a civilian Because I was not a military <laughs> man So I had to sign up as a civilian on Everyone's the like who's team. a civilian out here just <laughs> Oh like, they hated my guts Yeah but afterward, they were like, man, respect your brother. Because they didn't know. I told Because I told my sister, don't tell them because they probably won't let me play. Uh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So what, they you probably just broke your neck on you too. in the <laughs> same year. Like, I broke my neck that year. I was playing in November. Like, I broke my neck in July. Yeah. I was playing flag football in November. They would have been like, hell no, he ain't playing. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, it was it was it was amazing, man. Just to go out there and just touch the ball again, and just mm-hmm. all that love and that yeah. energy just came rushing back into me, and I just all of a sudden I had a purpose again. You know what I mean? Even if I didn't get to play football mm-hmm. anymore, just being out there and being an athlete yeah. was that's my purpose. Like, and and wherever that was supposed to lead me, that's where I was gonna let it take me. That's incredible. And then so back onto the field after you've had this like moment where you're like I can do this right. I'm ready to go but did everyone in the arena league like no you can't come back here I mean you like everyone knew you had this injury right because it kind of yeah. went through everyone in the league knew and then they're like Jojo's coming Jojo's coming back like yeah there there lies the story that I haven't told yeah I got many doors closed in my face like there was no way any team was letting me in so here comes another blessing in the world right my coach that I played for in Tulsa, um, my defensive coordinator, not my head coach, my defensive coordinator, he had just got picked up in the other arena league, the upper one, um, the one that's on, t- was on, that's on TV and all that stuff, yeah. right? Um, he had just got picked up by them, and he heard that I had made a recovery, right? Mm. And so I'm literally working at a Christian phone company <laughs> yeah. in Oklahoma, answering phones. Uh, it was like a Christian-based phone company, yeah. right? And uh, he calls me at home one night, and I promise you, he was like, are you ready? That was the first thing he said. And I was like, am I ready for what? Yeah. Like, who is this? Like, stop playing on my phone. And I almost hung up on him. I was like, man, quit playing on my phone. And he was like, Jojo, Jojo, wait, wait. This is Coach Foreman. This is Coach Foreman. I'm like, oh, what's up, Coach? You know, what's up? why are you... Why are you calling me though? Like, how, and how, you still got my number? Like, he was like, yeah, man. He's like, I'm not gonna lie, man. I just got this job in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm-hmm. It's in the Upper Arena League. He's like, coach told me I could bring in whoever I wanted. He said, I ain't gonna lie. I heard that you were back, and I thought I'm crazy even to ask, but are you ready to play? He's like, I've never ever been around a player like you that that not only is good but gives everything they got like yeah. he's like he's like and if you're even half as good as you were like I'll take you and I was like yeah I'm ready like <laughs> had no clue if I was ready or not but I wasn't going to pass up that opportunity you know like I felt like physically I was lifting weights now I was doing all that stuff physically I felt like I mean I don't know if I'm 100% but I'm going to go for it. I, yeah. I'll, will I ever get this chance again? You know, every other coach was like, oh, yeah, uh, we'll call you back. Yeah. And I never hear anything, you know. 
So he flew me out to Michigan, man. I was in practice and my defining moment in practice, in tryouts, I should say. I guess it was tryouts. Um, exact same play happens. I'm not kidding. Oh, man. So Is I'm this like on it. It's a crossing moment? route across the field. I break on it. Uh, knock the ball down. We both go into the wall. Boom. Right? I jump up, run back to the huddle. I get in the huddle. I'm looking around. I'm like, why is everybody, like, staring at me? And, like, everybody, I mean, literally, literally you could have heard a pin drop on yeah. the grass in there. Like, oh everybody's just, like, staring. And the coach walks over real slow, the head coach. He walks over to me. His co- my head coach there was uh, Michael Trigg. Mm-hmm. That was his name. And he walks over and he leans over to me. He's like, don't ever do that again. And then he walks away from me. But but I think that's what helped me make the team is because he saw that, oh, this dude ain't scared. Like, I, I thought I heard he broke his neck. Why did he just go into that wall like it was nothing? You know, like. And I think Are people just, hesitant to go into the wall in arena in general because oh, they know. Yeah, man. I, so one so of the going things for it is like actually uh, that you just got to. Yeah, it's a unique thing. Like it, it, to go full speed into the wall. Like I've, I've gotten interceptions where I literally was running full speed and caught the ball and flipped over the wall. Like because you're running that fast. Um, and it's, but you know it's there, so it's just kind of like a you kind of brace your body. I don't know how to explain it. You kind of like get yeah. used to it, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, coach was I could tell he was like, oh my god, this dude is he's Back. legit. He's like ready. he's not yeah. scared of anything. And I think that play right there would be probably my defining moment in camp. I mean, I balled out in yeah. camp regardless, yeah. but <laughs> I think that's what was like okay, well. I guess because right after that, that's scared. when we was like, he's, he's ready. okay, let's do some tackle drills. Like yeah. at first, it's just like they were gonna play with me with like kid gloves. You know what I mean? Oh, like I wouldn't have been able to do much or anything. But once he saw that, it's like yeah. game on. You know? Yeah. That's incredible. So the arena league. Let, let's let's uh, fast forward to to the dig stuff and and the core stuff because that's really cool. But the arena league lasted for. Or the arena career lasts like another ten, nine or ten years. About nine years, nine, yeah. Nine like years. Another nine. Years. And there was like two championships in there, right? And like three, baby. Three, three championships. Golly. Yeah. <laughs> I, and one of them came that year. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I could write a book, dude. Like I literally was paralyzed from the waist down. I was told I would never walk again. In July of 2000. I had won an arena championship in August of 2001. Wow. What an amazing story. Can't even. Yeah. yeah, I can't even put that into words just talking about it. And so you've been performing at this high level. You'd bounce back from this injury. It had been, you know, nine or ten years. And now what, what were the signs that arena was probably coming to the end for you? Man, uh, for me, it was if I ever feel like I don't love football, like if I I mean, I mean, and I mean in practice even yeah. like. I was I was that player that went out and practiced that we'd be out there at six in the morning. I'm like, what's up? Let's get it. <laughs> and everybody was like, shut up, Jojo. I have my coffee, man. Like, but uh, I was that good dude on the team, no matter what team I went to, just because I really did just love mm-hmm. being out there, man. And even more so after the injury, yeah. you know. Um, so I told myself if I ever felt like I didn't love it, like then I would. I would probably give it up. Mm-hmm. And I remember walking out to practice one day and I just was like, someone be here, you know? Yeah. And I, as soon as I said it though, I was like, did I just say I didn't want to be here? Like, oh snap, what's wrong with me? Like, I'm tripping. And I yeah. kind of brought myself out of that, but I felt like that was my means to an end. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, but you, you still had this like knack for fitness, right? And you were like, I got to stay active. And you started training. Yeah. yeah. But not right away, man. Uh, I honestly didn't know what the heck I was going to do. <laughs> I had played football for 11 years. so. And you rev- you re- your life kind of revolves around this sport. Yeah. And then once that's taken away, you're like, well, wh- where do I go? Yeah, where do I go yeah. from here? Well, I mean, I had never had a... You know, besides Wendy's and my lawn mowing business that I had when I was a kid, uh, I never really had a real job besides football. Like, yeah. you know, so it really was kind of surreal. But I will tell you this, Jacob, I, I'm 
I'm pretty happy because I've always done, I've always, if I want to do something, like, I'm going to go after what I love. Like, I know everybody has that conundrum or they have that, like, fight with themselves, like, should I go for the money or should I go for what I love? Like, I'm always going to go for what I love. Hopefully that'll bring me money and riches, but if it doesn't, at least I know that I'm doing something that just means something to me, you know? And so that was my thought process. I just needed to be around something athletic, you know? My degree was in health and human performance anyway. So I was like, oh, you know, I used to train my teammates, like all that stuff. And uh, so um, I was like, maybe, maybe that's where I want to look. So I just started taking little classes here and there mm-hmm. to see what I liked. And one of the instructors, his name was Tim Kelly. And um, I always give him credit because he uh, had me in class. And <laughs> after class, he walked up to me and was like, what are you doing in my class? Like, you shouldn't be here. And I'm like, oh, uh, well, thanks. I won't come back. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, like, and then he was like, no, dude, you should be teaching this class. He's like, no one's ever made it through my class. And I'm kind of pissed off about it. Because <laughs> he was like this boot camp trainer that everybody, like, feared, you know? And I was just sitting there like, mm, mm, mm. Let's whatever he it. said do, I was doing it, you know? But that's just been, always been my mentality, right? And I was like, oh, well, thanks a lot, yeah. I was like, I thought about it, but I really don't know what I would do training-wise, you know? Um, and he was like, well, you should be a trainer. Like, no doubt in my mind. And so in class, he would randomly be like, JoJo's going to lead us in push-ups today. And I'm like, no, 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 what? <laughs> and so that's the thing. It was kind of cool that he did that for me. I mean, it's not like he taught me how to be a trainer or anything, but the fact that he saw that in me even at the beginning um, meant a lot. And so I was like, well, maybe I'll give this thing a go. So I went and got certified and and went through the channels that I needed to, and I I started trying to become a trainer. Were you in Raleigh when you were going through this? Yeah. You were? Yeah. And you you get the training certification, then you started at a different gym, right? Yeah. Um, I actually started, it actually was called Seaboard Fitness and Wellness okay. when we started. Um, Showing and your then age O2, again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. And then O2 bought us out. Okay. So O2 Fitness took us over. Yeah. And, I, and I worked for O2 for a while, too. And then, uh, so the, the cool part is, like, now you're this entrepreneur, kind of a fitness entrepreneur, if you will. Um, what, was the, what was the inspiration that said, I want to take the jump to start a business? Man, honestly, I never thought I would own my own business. I know everybody's like, that's my dream. That was not my dream. I was perfectly happy working for people. I just just love being a trainer. I love being with the members. I love being with my other trainers. Like, it wasn't some this this aha moment that I was like, I'm going to be your owner, you know? Um, What happened was is I just... People, I guess, started seeing my love for the field, just like I had the love for football. I had that love for fitness, you know? And, uh... So before I knew it, I got an offer um, to be a partner at Core Fitness Studio, you know, and I, I didn't even know what to say. I was like, you don't know me, though. Like, why would you offer me? What if I suck? Yeah. Like, you know, they had never really seen me train or anything. But apparently, you know, word of mouth travels very far. Well, like, I got to say, like the coming back to that whole idea of the, the spirit that attracts people, like they want that around them. And even whether it's a an athletic team or a business, but having a contagious spirit that people are attracted to inherently, I mean, has to be a great reason to bring someone like you on board for oh, a business. You know? But that's the thing, Jacob. It's just the, the, the factor that I don't, I didn't know I was that guy. You know, I didn't yeah. know I was just like, do you know you're that guy now? Uh, man, you know what? I just know I'm mean. Because you are that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not you know <laughs> I just know I'm mean, man. I just, I, my whole life, my big thing has been don't change who you are. No matter what changes, yeah. no matter what fads happen or whatever, don't change who JoJo is and who he was when he was a kid. Like, just that love, that, that laughter and all that, the stupid, goofy stuff that I've always done. And I, I still do that to this day. Like, that's just who I am. And I think that... You know, my um, my team that works with me now, I mean, we all kind of follow that same, you know, we, we have that same spirit, you know, and I, I, I kind of choose my trainers like that. I mean, I, don't, I want people to care about not only the business and what we're doing, but the people within the, the walls and not only that, the people outside the walls that need us in the community and people that might not ever step foot into a gym unless we kind of like show them that this is not a scary place this is a sanctuary you know yeah yeah 
is, has that um, education tool or has that education piece been kind of hard? Oh, man, I wish I could say yes, yeah. but uh, no, man, it um, it's not like it came easy, but it's one of those things. Like I said, it's it's all about what you do, with mm-hmm. the work you put in. And and that's, I mean, it was a hard decision because I was actually working at Heat at this time, Heat Fitness, mm-hmm. um, Heat Studios, and uh, with Robin Fitzgerald and Ashley Farrar, and they're phenomenal trainers, you know. And uh, I liked where I was. Like, we had a great team. Um, but uh, it was the factor of, if I'm going to do this, what am I betting on? Like, what are, mm-hmm. what's my, what, what, what are my pros? What are my cons? Yeah. And so when I came back to football, even, I bet on me, right? Okay. Yeah, the, yeah. One, the one factor I know and the one person I know and the one, mm-hmm. you know, thing that I know is me. I know that I'm, what I'm going to do. I know the work I'm going to put in. I know... So that's a pretty sure bet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, same you know, thing. You know you. Yeah, right? I know me. Like, and I know no matter what, I'll find a way to make it work. Mm-hmm. Like, and so that's how I kind of became an owner. It's like, all right, if I'm going to do this, I got to yeah. bet on me. Even though I had a partner, I was like, I got to do me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And so, next thing you know, I was doing me and I realized. Oh crap! Not only am I doing me, I'm actually doing pretty decent at this. <laughs> and uh, surprise, and, surprise! Yeah, man. I, my big fear was all the paperwork and all the stuff in the background, but you know, it just becomes part of your everyday and and a part of you getting better. I mean, that's just it become, it's like it's just like plays in football. I mean, I, I hate to like bring everything back to a sport, but it's just like we've been prepared for this. Like you didn't want to study your playbook nonstop or watch film for hours at a time, but you did it to get better. Yeah. And so that's why you do all the paperwork and all the background. Well, stuff. I, I love the comparison. Cause I, I just think it shows how there's so many, um, not necessarily specific skills, but like traits that you carry with you into other walks of life. And it's so cool to see how this foundation you built doing football, you know, on an elite level has helped you, in so many other ways and it really comes back to that personality the traits like in the you know the underlying um will like the will you have to go through with something which is which is really incredible the killer thing about it jacob is a lot of businesses they're seeking that now they're Mm -hmm. they're looking at your resume and they may not tell you but they're trying to see did he play lacrosse did he play on some kind of team sport because it's starting to 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 manifest itself that Mm -hmm. most athletes that are of course, you have to get your education too, but most educated athletes, they're better teammates. They're better players when it comes to your business. Like they, because they've been there before, they've shared the spotlight before. They don't have to be the person. They're they're fine with working on a team. And a lot of businesses are are they're seeking out athletes now. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense in the modern world looking for people that can work on a team together with how with how things are moving. That's great. Well, Jojo, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate the time, um, you know, coming from someone who I think is one of the more inspirational people in the triangle, if not North Carolina, if not the United <laughs> States and the world. You yeah, need to write sure. that book. And uh, I'm sure all, all everyone who watches this will be convinced that they want to read it as well. Where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me, uh, Jojo Pope Dig, on Instagram or uh I'm uh, Joseph Polk on Facebook uh, and CoreRaleigh.com. You can find our business and find me. Awesome. Well, JoJo, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man.